stagflation of the late 1970s was pretty terrible for our economy and left lasting scars on our country and city. And yes, even in the halls of academia, major shifts were occurring. The reality of the U.S. economy shrinking at the same time that inflation was throttling upward made one thing very clear. A macroeconomic model that didn't include inflation as an endogenous variable was trash, which meant that the aggregate expenditures, or AE, model needed to be seriously revamped. But how exactly will we take a relatively sensible model and make it more externally valid? Well... We know that every point on the aggregate expenditures curve that intersects the 45 degree line is technically a point of equilibrium. Planned output equals actual output for the economy. If the difference between planned and actual output is the level of unplanned investment in inventories, then there's probably a correct mechanism through prices. In other words, if there was too much inventory and the unplanned investment number has a negative sign, then prices will probably fall in reaction to the surplus of inventory. A fall in the price level or a decrease in inflation would increase the real value of GDP. There's our mechanism. Prices must change if the economy is to move to equilibrium in the AE model, even if the model doesn't explicitly acknowledge it. If the AE curve is at the equilibrium, then that represents at least one level of output that we can pin to a certain price level. If we can pin it to a certain price level, then we can also pin it to a position on the aggregate supply, aggregate demand, or ASAD model, and specifically onto the aggregate demand curve. But the AD curve has a bunch of theoretical points relating output to the price level on it. How would we figure out the other points? To know that, we would need to know what would possibly change in the aggregate expenditure model if price levels change in the economy. First, we know the changes to marginal propensity to consume and therefore to save, could change the slope of the aggregate expenditure curve, which would create a new equilibrium level of output. Just to either MPC or MPS could happen if price levels change through the wealth effect. Changes in inflation would change the real value of wealth and therefore change how comfortable households are with consuming current income. Changes in the price level can also flow through the money market and change real interest rates and through the interest rate effect, change appetites for private investment, and also change the slope of the aggregate expenditure curve. Changes in prices could also change foreign demand for our goods and services, changing net exports and also changing the slope of the AE curve. Autonomous consumption, the constant value of the function, could also theoretically change the price level change, shifting the entire AE curve up or down. All of that just means that technically any potential point along the 45 degree line that could be intersected by a theoretical AE curve represents a point on the AD curve that could exist. The connection between the points in both models, aside from the level of output in the economy, is how much prices would have to change to make the theoretical a reality. The multiplier also works in a similar way. A non-inflationary related increase one of the constants in aggregate expenditures, for example, a fiscal policy that injects $500 billion into businesses may increase the autonomous level or intercept of the AE curve by $500 billion. But because the AE curve isn't at the same slope as the 45 degree line, $500 billion change in the intercept will naturally have a multiplied effect on where you will find the new level of equilibrium output.